What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna learn how to use databases with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're gonna learn how to use databases with Django, but before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've done some Django series throughout this YouTube channel, and a lot of times I kind of gloss over the database stuff because it's a little bit more complicated, and it's sort of a more, I'd say, intermediate topic. But in this playlist, in this series, we're going to look at databases with Django. We're going to dive in, really learn this stuff inside and out. So in this video, we're going to get started. We're going to build a project that we can then start doing database stuff with, and that uh, should be cool. So I'm gonna assume you already have Python installed on your computer. If you don't know how to do that, check the channel. There's a tons of videos teaching how to install Python. I'm also gonna assume you have the Git bash terminal. Again, if you don't know, uh, if you don't have that installed or if you don't know how to, check the channel. I've got a ton of those. If you just go to, get, uh, go to Google and type in Git bash, it's this git-scm.com forward slash downloads website. Just go ahead and download and install this. Take the defaults for everything and you should be good to go. I'm also going to be using Sublime Text for our, you know, text editor. Uh, that's what I always use. And uh, you can go to sublimetext.com to download and install that. So let's head over to our Git Bash terminal. And the first thing we want to do is create a new Django project. So first we need to create a directory to hold all this stuff. So, so let's go mkdir, make directory, and let's put it in the C drive. And let's just call this, uh, I don't know, Django DB database, whatever. And now we need to move into that directory. So Django DB. And now if we LS, we see there's nothing there. So the first thing we want to do is create a virtual environment. So let's go Python dash M V E N V. And let's just call this virtual. And it usually takes a second for this to spin up. So now if we ls, we see we've got our virtual directory. So we can now turn this on with source virtual scripts activate. If you're on a Mac, it's source bin activate, I think. Uh, like, like that. You know, something like that, I think. <laughs> so, okay. We hit enter a bunch of times. We see our virtual environment has been turned on. All right. So let's pip install Django, and you could just get the latest version, whatever that is. I think we're on three point something now, so that will download and install that. So we're downloading this Python time zone file, SQL parse, which is the database thing, Django itself, and this ask ref thing, which is, uh, I think, an asynchronous something or other, web browser or web server something. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Just these are the default things that you always get when you pip install Django. Okay, so now we can pip freeze to make sure that was installed correctly. And sure enough, we've got version 3.03 .03 of Django. Okay, so let's, we can create our project now. Let's go, let's go Django-admin.py and then start project. And let's just call this DB. And now if we ls, we see this Django DB directory, you know, so we can move into that and ls this, and we see our manage.py file in our Django DB. So now we can create our project as we always do. So let's go Python manage.py start app. And let's just call this website because we're building a website. Okay, so now we can open up our sublime text. And we can go to project, add folder to project, and just navigate to your C drive and find that Django DB directory. And then inside of there, that one, the second one, and then we can select our folder and boom, boom, it bops up. So, and the first thing we always want to do is mess around with our urls.py file. So let's add include to this, and then let's create another path. And this is just basic Django stuff we always do. Include. And here we want website.urls. 
All right, that should be good. Why are we getting an error here? I don't know. But we can go ahead and close that. We can also open up our settings.py file and go to our installed apps. And let's add that website app that we just created. Now let's go to our website directory, right click and create a new file and then file save as, and we'll save this as urls.py. And let's go back to our old urls.py file and just copy all this stuff. Still getting an error there. I wonder what's going on. Oh, I misspelled website. Maybe that. Let's see. No. I don't know. Weird. We'll just roll with it here. Uh, so go to our second urls.py file and paste this in. Now we can get rid of this admin thing and we can get rid of this include. And we can get rid of all of these. And that seems to work fine now. What am I missing here? So path. Ah, there we go. We're missing. There we go. <laughs> All right. It's Monday after Super Bowl. You just have to bear with me this morning. All right. So let's go to our website templates and create a new folder and let's or website directory and create a new folder called it call it templates inside of templates. Let's create a new file and let's save this as home dot HTML. And here, let's just go hello world. So then we want to go to our urls.py file. Let's create a URL for this. And we want it to be our root URL. And we want it to be in views.home. And we want the name to equal home. And then up here, we need to import views. So from right here, import views, save this. And finally, we need to go to our views.py file and create a view. So let's create that home view. We want to pass in the request. And we just want to return render request home.html and pass in our context dictionary. Okay, so if we save all these things and then head back over to here and let's run our server manage.py run server. And then we can head back over to our web browser and just go to localhost colon 8000 and boom, we see hello world. So our project is now ready to go. We have everything we need. Now, if we hit control C to break out of the web server, you can see we have 17 unapplied migrations. And this is the first sort of databasey thing I want to talk about before we get into the real database stuff. So Django right out of the box comes with a small SQLite database used for the admin area. And in fact, if we go to the admin area here, just by going to forward slash admin, well, we got to turn our server back on. So let's run our server. And when we do that, boom, we get this Django admin area, right? It comes with a database. And in order to use that database, we have to migrate the server. So lesson number one of databases, anytime you want to do something with a, a database, you have to first create the, the stuff you want to do with the database. Then you have to make a migration, then you have to push that migration. So the Django de by default comes with a make migration already created, but it hasn't been pushed into the database yet. So uh, making a migration is sort of like creating whatever you want to do with your database. And then migrating it is pushing that migration into the server. So to do that, we just come over here, let's control C to break out of here. And we just go Python manage.py migrate. And that will push all of those things and uh, we can start to use it now. Now, we also want to get into that admin section, right? But we don't have a username to get in there yet. So let's create that real quick. So I'm going to clear the screen. And to do that, we type in win PTY. And if you're using Mac or Linux terminal, you don't have to type in win PTY. This is a git bash thing on Windows. We just have to do this. It's just kind of a weird thing. So win PTY and then Python manage.py create super user all one word. Now for my username, I always use admin, my email address, we can leave that blank password, just pick any password you want. Type it in again. And you'll notice it's not being typed on the screen. That's a security feature, rest assured it is being created. And our super user was created successful successfully. So now let's run the server again. And head back over to this localhost colon 8000 slash admin 
section and now we can log in with that username and password we just created and boom this is the django admin area right we're going to be able to do a lot of database stuff in this area and we're going to be doing database stuff on our website as well but this is sort of the back end area that django has for database work so we'll be we'll be doing both of those things database stuff on our website and database stuff on this back end Django admin area throughout the rest of this course. So it is Monday morning, the day after Super Bowl. So we're going to cut this video off right here because yeah, a little bit hungover this morning. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to get our new project set up, talk to you a little bit about what we're going to be doing. Like I said, we're going to be learning databases with Django inside and out and really sort of get in there and learn how to do some fun stuff. And I think you're going to be really surprised just how easy it is to use databases with Django. That's one of the great things about Django or really any web framework like Ruby on Rails, uh, Django, et cetera. They sort of abstract away the database and do a lot of the hard, heavy lifting for us, which makes actually using databases with Django or Ruby on Rails super, super easy and actually kind of fun. So we're going to be learning all this stuff starting in the next video. And uh as far as this video goes, just go ahead and get your sort of project area set up, your new little website. Check out the admin area, you know, play around with it a little bit, see what's in there. Can't do much with it right now, but we will in the next video, and that uh, should be fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Konaby.com, and I'll see you in the next video.